Hey there, today we're going to be going over a process to make some pretty awesome chrome text. The general process we'll be following is combining layer styles like bevel and emboss as well as other effects to build a black and white foundation for the style we're going after. Then we'll be remapping those black and white values to transform our text foundation into some cool looking chrome. Then finally I'll quickly walk you through some of the things I did to make them look even better in the final composition. So with that out of the way, let's get to it. As I'm sure you probably guessed, we'll start off by making our text. To get this half solid, half striped look, you can obviously just use a font that looks like this, but you can also make it yourself pretty quickly just by adding the Venetian blinds effect to whatever font you want. After setting the direction to 90 degrees and both the transition completion and width to 30, you just mask the lower half, double click the Venetian blinds effect, and then just click the plus on the compositing option so that we change the mask into an effect mask, meaning the Venetian blinds effect only applies to the area we just masked. After that, you can just tweak the transition completion and width to whatever works for you. Or don't. You don't really need a slotted font at all for this look to look good, so up to you. One thing that is important though is making sure your text color is set to 50% gray. Pretty much everything we do for this effect hinges on the value or brightness of our text's color, so 50% gray is a perfect neutral starting point. Now I'll just select everything and pre-compose making sure to move all attributes and rename it to text comp. Ultimately what we're going to end up doing is using an effect called colorama to remap our white to black range into whatever color range we want. But trying that on a normal gray text layer isn't going to do anything, so we'll have to introduce some light and dark values into our text to give it shape so that when we go to remap the colors we actually have something to play around with. To get started we're going to right click our text comp, choose layer styles, and then click on bevel and emboss. If you haven't used these before they're basically just the after effects versions of photoshop layer styles. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, they're essentially just a few standard effects that you can apply to a layer. Some of them just aren't available in the effects stack. Like stroke the layer style is the same as stroke in Photoshop, which just creates an outline around your layer. Meanwhile in After Effects, the stroke effect is a completely different thing. And while the effects stack does have a couple bevel effects, neither of them are on par with the bevel and emboss layer style. Something to keep in mind about layer styles is that they're applied after all of the effects on the layer are applied. So for example, if I add the stroke layer style to an effect, then add the drop shadow effect, the stroke layer style is still applied after the drop shadow effect, so the drop shadow gets an outline as well. Now that we're on the same page, let's get back to the effect. In our bevel and emboss, I'm going to change the technique from smooth to chisel hard, depth to 600, size to 6, and softness to 6 as well. Then I'll choose a direction for the light by changing the angle to 60 degrees. I'll also change the altitude from 30 to 60 and the highlight and shadow opacity both to 30. This layer style is one of the main factors in shaping our overall look, so this is definitely something you should play around with after you finish watching, because by then you should have a better idea of what it does to the final look. And now that we've got a bit of depth to our text, we could jump right into remapping values and actually see something happen, but whatever we do to it is going to be applied pretty uniformly across the whole thing. We've got some values to play around with on the edges of the text, but the text itself is going to look kind of flat and not very chromey. So to fix that, we'll apply a gradient across the whole thing, and when we move on to remapping values, you'll see why that's so important. To make the gradient, we'll just make a new solid, name it gradient, and then add the gradient ramp effect. Next, set the layer to overlay and swap the color so that we've got white on top. What we want to do is move our white point just a bit above the text and the black point just a bit below it. Then we'll add the set matte effect and set the target as our text comp so that our gradient only applies where our text is and not onto the background as well. And now that we've got a decent base for our text set up, we can start remapping. So create a new adjustment layer by going to layer, new adjustment layer, and rename it to oh, Okay, uh, what's going on here? Why is everything- Chrome. Then we'll add the colorama effect. Before we do anything with it though, since the basis of this whole effect revolves around remapping colors, we need to switch our project from 8 bits per channel, which is most likely your default, to 16 bits per channel. This basically just increases the resolution of our available color data so that we have smoother gradients and more control over colors while remapping. To do that, just head over to the project panel and holding alt or option on a Mac, click on the 8 bits per channel button to cycle it to 16. Now back over to Colorama, open up the output cycle settings and change the preset over to ramp gray so that our starting point is a clean slate and not a disco circus. To start getting the cool retro chrome effect, one thing that's pretty much always there is this big dividing reflection line. So to do that, no matter what kind of style and look you want to give your chrome, we're going to need two big contrasting colors right next to each other down here, around the midway point of our remap. So grabbing the white, I'll move it right to the bottom for now, and I'll do the same for the black, placing it right up next to the white. As long as two highly contrasting colors are placed super close together like this, we'll get a hard dividing reflection line that we want. We can move these two up or down to control where that reflection line will be, and as long as we move them together, we're good to go. Now like I said before, these colors just have to contrast with each other, so we can actually just double click them and- Why is the UI panel for this still so disgusting? 
after all these years. We can change the colors into colors that better suit our style and look that we want. It doesn't have to just be black and white, as long as we maintain good contrast. I'll be going for a purple, blue, and pink vapor wavy color scheme, so I'll change my darker point to a really dark purple. Now here's where we can get creative and start adding more colors in to shape the look we want. To help, you can always look up retro chrome references and try to match the colors and gradients you see there. Generally, you'll want the very bottom to be bright and shining as well, so I'll click the general area matching the bottom's color to add a new point. I'm going to set the hue to pink and raise the value to almost white, then tweak it a bit until it's in the spot I want. By the way, to get rid of any points, just drag it away from the wheel to pluck it off. The next thing I'll do is fix this murky gray by adding more vibrant pink in between these two points to bridge the gap. I'm sure you kind of get the idea at this point, so just play around with your gradients until you get something you're happy with, and don't be afraid to look at reference to try to match them, because making nice looking gradients can be really tough. Now after adding Colorama, you might have noticed these gross jagged white edges around your text. To get rid of those, we just have to head over to our gradient layer, copy the set matte effect, and then paste it onto our chrome adjustment layer. Now we can finish tweaking our gradient in peace. But don't spend too long tweaking them though, because there's still a couple more things we'll be adding underneath our adjustment layer to change the color values a bit and make our text look even better. The first thing we'll do is make it so our gradient and hard reflection line in particular are a little more warped and organic. Go ahead and create a new solid, rename it to Turbulence, and then add the Turbulent Noise effect to it. For the most part, the default settings will be fine, but we'll need to make it bigger so that the warping is more subtle. So open up the transform settings for it, and set the scale to 200. Then copy the set matte effect we've been using over to it, change the blending mode to overlay, and move it underneath our chrome adjustment layer. Now you can kind of see what we're going for here, but it's still way too strong for my liking, so I'll lower the opacity to like 30%. To soften up any harshness, I'll add the fast box blur effect to it, set the blur radius and iterations to 5, then just make sure to lift it above the set matte effect in the effect stack. Now it's looking a lot better, and to give it a bit of life, we can have the turbulence slowly evolve over time by holding Alt or Option and clicking the stopwatch next to evolution, and writing time times 100 in the expression box so that it increases by 100 every second. Now our effect is definitely starting to take shape, but we're not quite done yet. Next let's right click the text comp, go to layer styles, and add the inner glow effect as well. Go ahead and change the color to black, the blend mode from screen to soft light, the size to about 20, the range to 100, and lower the opacity to about 20. If I go ahead and hide all of the layers above, you can see what we're doing here is just adding some very soft dark values to the edges so that when we turn everything back on, it gives the impression that our text is a little more curved. And if you want to give it a slightly stronger warp, you can change the blending mode to overlay instead. Both the overlay and soft light blending mode pretty much do the same thing. Wherever your layer has dark values, it makes the layers beneath have darker midpoints and shadows. And wherever your layer has light values, it makes the layers beneath have brighter midtones and highlights. The only real difference is that soft light is just a smoother, less harsh version of overlay. Now the last layer style we're going to add is inner shadow. The reason we're adding both an inner glow and an inner shadow is so that we can have a larger, softer inner glow paired with a smaller inner shadow so that we can make it even darker, meaning more warped, at the very edges of our text. So go ahead and change your blending mode from multiply to soft light, the size to 15, the distance to 0 so that it's applied evenly on all sides, and then lower the opacity to 20%. Now the very last thing we'll be adding underneath our chrome adjustment layer is going to be a light sweep, so that we brighten up the edges that face the direction of our fake light that we chose earlier on in our bevel and emboss layer style. So create a new solid again, name it light sweep, make sure it's placed under the chrome layer, and then add the CC light sweep effect to it. Now it sort of looks like it's working here, but if we turn off the chrome adjustment layer we can see that it's not reacting to the edges of the text how it should be. Since we've just thrown it on a solid, it's using the solid's edges. To fix that, we'll copy over our trusty set matte effect and make sure we place it above the light sweep in our effect stack, so that the solid gets clipped down to the shape of our text before the light sweep is applied. Now for the light sweep settings, I'll change the sweep intensity to 0 so that we only get edge light. Increase the width to fill the whole frame by setting it to something like 2000. Increase the edge intensity to 10, the edge thickness to 5, and change the light reception to cutout so that instead of the light being added on top of our solid, we're left with only our light. And finally, I'll set the blending mode to overlay. Now we just need to set the direction to the same direction we chose for our bevel and emboss layer style, which was 60 degrees. Since that was the last thing we're adding underneath our chrome adjustment layer, we can do some final tweaks on the positioning of our colorama remapping. One more optional thing we can add on top of everything else is another light sweep to really add some final shine. I'll just duplicate the light sweep we've already made, rename it to top shine, move it above the chrome layer, and then solo it so that we can see what's going on a bit better. 
I want this final shine to be a bit more direct and only focus on the main areas being hit by the light, not these weaker sides. To get that done, I'll increase the edge intensity to 20 and the edge thickness to 7, then I'm going to add the simple choker effect and increase the choke mat so that we crush most of the weaker lines and are still left with the stronger, more direct ones. This might come in handy while dealing with the simple choker effect, but if you didn't already know, you can hold control while dragging a value to get finer control over how much it changes. After all that, we'll just unsolo the layer, change the blending mode to add, and we're done. Alright, so now I'll just go over all the layers and effects I used to composite this example. So to start off, I've just got my background image here, the chrome text, and some secondary text. To get the background to align more with the vibe that I wanted, I just added a tint effect to it and set the white to a pink to give us this look. Then I added a glow to it with a really big radius and some soft intensity with a wiggle on it, just to give it a bit of life and to kind of blow out this glow a lot more. After that we added a curves to just make it a little bit brighter, and a fast box blur which I'll come back to at the end. Over to the chrome text now, what I did was add the CC light sweep effect to it just to give it a bit of life. If I turn this on and solo the layer, you can see here that I've just got it slowly animating across. It looks pretty subtle, but it's just to give it a bit of life. And after that I've just got a subtle blue glow on it as well to kind of tie it in with our background and vibe more. Next is our secondary text. For this one, all I really did was stack three pink glows on top of each other. If you didn't already know, just like with drop shadows, if you stack a couple of subtle glows on top of each other, it's going to look a lot better than one strong glow. One thing I did want to mention with this layer is that a lot of times if you want something to be bright and glowing, people make the mistake of making their text or whatever it is they're glowing into the color that they want it to glow. But if you take a look at lightsabers or neon signs or even the sun, more often than not the thing that's glowing is just going to be white, and the color of the glow is kind of what determines the color of the thing itself. If that makes sense. Alright, so next on the layer stack, we've just got the slow zoom controller. This layer is not really doing anything. I've just parented the text and background to it and then increased the scale by like 2% over the course of this title, just to give it a bit of motion. Now after that, we've got our 4x3 mat and our 4x3 solid. So the 4x3 mat is just a solid layer that I've made 4x3. And the reason we did that is because the solid underneath it is set to alpha inverted. And so we cut out that 4x3 square and it gives us only these black bars on the side. And now I could have just set the composition size to 4x3 and not have these black bars at all. But one of the reasons I wanted these black bars here is so that I could add a fast box blur to the 4x3 mat, set the blur to horizontal and have this kind of soft blurred edge going on. Another reason is that when we add grain later on, the grain will show up on the black bars. Now next up we have the scan lines layer. This layer is basically just some soft Venetian blinds to give us this slotted look, and I added a motion tile effect with it slowly animating upwards to give us this old TV scan line look. It's really subtle in the final composition, but it's just one of those things that you add on top to make the overall quality even better. Alright, so finishing off with our adjustment layers, we have our overall glows adjustment. This one is just a couple glows on top of each other as well as the curves effect. This layer is basically just here to make the of edits text look even better, but it also serves as a nice overall bloom for the whole composition, as well as it focuses some really good glow right here on the highlights of our chrome text. So if I turn this on and off, you can kind of see what I'm talking about there. Last but not least, we have our sharpens and blurs. So if you didn't already know, a quick way to make low resolution retro-y looking stuff is to add sharpens and blurs on top of each other. So here we've got a sharpen set to 400, then a fast box blur, then another sharpen, then another fast box blur. And here, if I turn it on and off, you can see that here's looking good. Here's looking really old and crunchy, but that's exactly what we want. So it's perfect. And in between all that, I've just added a add grain effect to add some subtle grain on the sides and on the composition itself. And this is pretty much it. One thing I did add afterwards is going into the background layer, I added a fast box blur just so we could detract from the crunchiness of the lines on the mountain so that our attention is drawn to the text a little bit more and it declutters this background space as you can see right here. And that's it. That's just a quick walkthrough of the Chrome compositing example. So hopefully after seeing that you've got some inspiration on what you can do to composite the Chrome yourself. This whole mix of adding values with layer styles as well as using colorometer to remap those values is really powerful and you can get a ton of looks with this so if you end up making anything cool with it feel free to tag me on Twitter or Instagram. You can find the link to both of those in the description. And that's all for this video. So if you liked it head over to my channel watch another one of my videos and if you like that one too then maybe you should just subscribe because I got some bangers on here. We only make bangers on this channel okay. We're full of bangers. It's banger central over here. In fact I should change the name to Academy of Bangers really.